Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're now delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest for this afternoon, His Excellency Ambassador Ahmed Haggag, the former Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. It's a very good afternoon to you, Mr. Ambassador. Good afternoon. Thank, thank you. you very, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for joining us this afternoon. Now, the United Nations has appealed for Sudanese battling factions to just allow the delivery of the humanitarian relief to fend off a looming, a catastrophic hunger disaster. This means, Mr. Ambassador, that the food and the humanitarian relief is actually there. However, they are struggling to get it to the people that definitely need it. How do you see this latest appeal by the United Nations for the Sudanese? The last United Nations report appealed for uh, assistance from donors mm. by $2.4 billion at least. Mm. But the response was not great. Uh, some money came from the European Union, the United States, and the Sprinter of other countries. Uh, Sudan is a huge, uh, big country yes. with uh, infrastructure which is... Uh, uh, barely covers uh, a few parts of the uh, of the country itself. That's why even if we anticipate that there will be assistance, it will be difficult to distribute it to the requested uh, areas. Therefore, uh, the United Nations and uh, when the countries are keen to establish a network of uh, or Air, uh, uh, facilitated in order to deliver to the needy uh, people in from parts of Sudan. Indeed. Your Excellency, now the UN Humanitarian Chief Martin Griffiths has warned the Security Council that over 18 million Sudanese people are already facing acute food insecurity and almost 5 million could slip into catastrophic food insecurity in some parts of the country uh, in the coming months. And we are talking out of these numbers, nearly 730,000 Sudanese children are also thought to be suffering from a severe malnutrition. Now, uh, an, another problem on the ground is to how to get some of the aid to these uh, areas because of the fighting and the conflict uh, on the ground. In your opinion, how do you see the appeal with regards to just providing corridors for the safe passage of the aid? The most uh, affected uh, sector of Sudanese people are the children yes. who have uh, seized their education and uh, they are uh, suffering from uh, malnourishing. Uh, they need a lot of medicine and assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not uh, forthcoming in uh, uh, quantities or qualities uh, as uh, needed. So therefore the international community uh, especially uh, friendly countries and the United Nations itself has to double their efforts in order to get uh, such a good response for their appeal uh, for assistance uh, to the needy in Sudan. The situation is very dire. Indeed. And it is uh, expected to worsen in the next few months unless there is uh, a rapid uh, response and adequate rep uh, response from the international community to the needy in Sudan. Indeed. Your Excellency, what are some of the steps that you see as viable and extremely needed now uh, by the international community to interfere and to get the Sudanese factions to, uh, you know, back, to get back together on a negotiating table? There was a negotiating table which, I, you know, uh, uh, Egypt, uh, after the outbreak of hostilities in Sudan, yes. President Sisi called for the uh, summit meeting of uh, neighboring countries of Sudan. Mm -hmm. And uh, they adopted a very ambitious and uh, careful uh, um, uh, uh, study on the recommendation in order to uh, uh, get a ceasefire as soon as possible. Unfortunately, the, the hostilities between uh, the two parties uh, increased, and uh, even uh, Ramadan uh, months now, the, I think uh, the, the government forces has retaken mm -hmm. broadcasting the station uh, Sudan, which was under the control of the rapid uh, 
uh, forces, uh, Sudanese rapid forces, of um, uh, the people, especially which is based in uh, Darfur. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, the problem now that the world is facing with a lot of uh, conflicts uh, in Sudan, in uh, in Gaza, in uh, uh, Ukraine, and uh, and uh, Russia, and even in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So I think the donor community is not uh, uh, prepared enough to cope with all those conflicts at the same time. Nevertheless, I think uh, neighboring countries especially uh, should uh, stop uh, forward and uh, deliver as much as possible assistance for the uh, displaced persons. And uh, the conflict have uh, resulted in 13,000 fatalities uh, now were killed uh, uh, during the fighting. The fighting is still continuing. Indeed, Your Excellency. On a political front uh, and with, with regards to diplomatic ties, what can be done by neighboring countries uh, for Sudan in order to get the conflicting sides uh, to sit down and reach some sort of agreement or power sharing deal, etc.? As I mentioned before, Egypt uh, hosted a summit yes. and it opened its borders for uh, more than half a million host. refugees, uh, which are uh, staying not in camps or tents, but they are amalgamated with the Egyptian people. Yes. I noticed even uh, beside my house, there is a, uh, a Sudanese educational uh, school open for uh, children who came with the refugees. So, uh, but the majority of children and the people of Sudan are suffering. Uh, we have to keep uh, uh, imploring uh, to the uh, warring faction in order to uh, uh, recognize the ceasefire and allow the intervention of the United Nations and in consortium with uh, neighboring countries to uh, find a political uh, solution which will spare destruction in um, a huge country like Sudan. Mm -hmm. Right. On that note, I'd like to thank you very, very much, Your Excellency Ambassador Ahmad Haggag, the former Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. Thank you very much, sir, for your time and for your insight and for joining us on our edition of Arab Affairs. And with that, we come to the end of today's episode. I do hope you have enjoyed it. You are in the company of myself and Jumehir. Many thanks for joining us.